So I'm trying to make a game both with visual programming and coding to see how they compare in terms of how well you can implement the logic of the game exactly the way you want it and of course how fast you can do it. Now I'm someone who appreciates the freedom that coding with a programming language like C++, C Sharp or in this case GD Script gives you. But I have done some visual programming in the channel before and honestly I can see their usefulness in some scenarios especially when you are learning to make a game for the first time. Now when I say I prefer coding as in actually typing a text, I don't mean I hate visual programming. It's just always been easier for me to type A equals A plus 1 than to drag a bunch of things. But that's just me. I know some people actually prefer visual programming and you can make complex stuff in it as well. Not to mention sometimes it makes more sense to use visual programming for things that otherwise would have required a non-coder to learn a programming language just for that process. But this video is not about if you should or shouldn't use visual programming. We, well, I'm going to attempt to make the same game in my game engine of choice with coding and also another one in Scratch with visual programming. Now, why Scratch? Because it's already well known and chances are you've already used it or at least know how it works so you can have a better perspective. Now, the other thing is I'm also not very good at Scratch so this should be interesting as you watch me suffer from learning some of the basic stuff. So to start this off, I fired up the game engine of my choice which in this case is Godot and started to make the simplest game I could think of, in this case a platformer. Now, the focus of this project is not on the art style of the game not that I'm actually any good in that anyways. So you're going to have to excuse some of the looks in the game. Now to make a solid ground act solid, we're going to use the built-in physics in the engine, which in this case is called static body. Now I'm not sure if Scratch supports something like this or what, but let's continue. So a quick explanation of this code for my non-coder viewers. The ready method runs once when everything is loaded and ready. The next method is physics process, which is kind of like process but this one is called a fixed number of times per second and you would usually handle the player movement here so now let's make the same setup in scratch okay how do you add a sprite uh there there seems to actually be a button dedicated for that uh let's add one from their collection so i'm assuming nothing should happen when i click play and no it doesn't so how do i tell it that there's a ground here i guess you don't just move it lower and it's on the ground, yeah. But wait, how would it come back to the ground position when jumping? This is actually hard, man. Now, I couldn't help but notice in the motion section, there was a move block that would actually do what it said it'd do if you clicked on it directly, which was kind of cool to see. But now I was trying to make the cat move whenever my A and D keys were being pressed. And I stumbled upon this control section here, which had something that would have probably been the if statement equivalent in a typed coding language. So I dragged my first piece in the editor and I noticed these puzzle looking parts, which would probably help you a lot in terms of where each piece should go. Then I found this key press thing and dragged it on the if block and added some more blocks and this is how the game turned out. Oops, I guess I forgot to put the game on every frame or something. Uh, there's actually no blocks for that, but there is a win key pressed event. What? So I guess you don't really pull for the input of the player in Scratch, instead you have events and there we go, we have it. Now we have something like a forever loop, but I'm not sure if that would be insane to use or not because in a programming language, a forever loop would basically run as fast as the PC can handle so often it will crash the game or make it very unresponsive and laggy. But here, it seems to be fine. I guess with this one, Scratch has a limit on how fast this will be run, so what I'm actually seeing here is not that bad. Now for jumping, I had absolutely no idea how to implement it in Scratch. Now the first idea I had was to use the glide block but you can see whenever I hit the space key it does kind of jump but it doesn't come back to the ground. So then I thought with myself what if we add another glide to bring it down to the ground. Now I know all you scratchers are probably laughing behind your screens right now but I went ahead and actually did it and this is how it turned out. I mean it's jumping but for some reason I couldn't move around while in midair. So I guess that's it for that idea. So then I started to actually make the jumping functionality the right way. Well 
the way I do it in a programming language anyways. And that's how we ended up with this monstrosity of thing. Basically check if we are pressing the jump key and if our Y position is equal to a fixed value which is the ground position for this specific background image. In that case set a jump height and increase and decrease the Y position based on where we are in the logic. I also added this little thing where the cat would turn and actually look at the direction it's walking. It's a small thing but it was cool to add. Now I kind of did the same thing in Godot but you can see the jumping is turned out to be much better here and that's because we are not directly changing the position of the player in Godot but the physics engine is. So that's why it kind of looks better with the same code essentially. Now since we're already here I wanted to also add a way to pick up coins and stuff which I did by making a new scene for the coin and setting up the collision and sprite for it. So now whenever we make contact with it it should disappear. I do it basically by a signal which is emitted whenever anything with a collision shape comes in contact with it. And you can see it indeed works the way we want it to work. Now what I'm worried about is how we're gonna make this in a scratch. So for now let's add a sprite as a collectible and thankfully I found this touching block and with that I had more hope for the game. To test it I put an if statement on the loop and with that I only needed to figure out how to remove the collectible once the player had made contact with it. Uh, I couldn't really find a remove sprite block so for now let's just hide it and with that you can see we are actually collecting stuff. Well not really, we need to add a score. Also the annoying thing is because everything is running at real time whenever you hide a sprite even if you press the stop button it won't show them again. It's like everything is in effect permanently which if I'm being honest I'm not a big fan of. So to save myself some time I added an event to check for a button and then reset the collectibles. Now the adding score part I couldn't help but notice that there are these broadcast blocks in the event section and I was like wait are these like functions? I'm thinking we could use this broadcast block to receive whenever we picked a collectible and then add a score. And you can see that actually works very well. Now thinking about it you could just increase this score variable directly in the sprites themselves but hey now at least we know how broadcasts work. Now the game wasn't really feeling like a game because we couldn't really move any further than the background image and I had no idea how to expand the level and clicking the backdrop button would do nothing. Now there had to be a way to handle this because there was a next backdrop block. You see in Godot I would just add a camera and then make the X position of it to always follow the player. Now after watching the tutorial on scratch I realized that the backdrops do get added but not in the stage panel. So now how am I supposed to make more levels and edit them? I have no idea. So I just make the backdrop different when we collect all the collectibles in the level and reset the player position and collectibles. And this is a game I guess. Now I guess the next step would be to add enemies and obstacles but honestly I don't think I can handle that. At least not in this video. Also this is how the game turned out in Godot. You can see I can do much better level design thanks to the physics engine. Now let me know how you would do this in Scratch. I'm interested to hear all your opinions. But yeah this was a fun project. Let me know your opinion about the whole coding versus visual programming thing and thanks for watching.